on Damn, our second year. Dog, Where will right. my third Max Fun tattoo go? <laughs> Find like... out next year. <laughs> I thought it was pretty apparent which part of our body looks most like a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, jeez. I made a mistake. <laughs> Matt, Matt work in blue. <laughs> also a weird place to do your first tattoo. Like, I really That's dove true. in hard. That's true. The guy gave you a look. Um, so podcasts like ours are supported by that network, and that network is supported by listeners like you. And this is the time of year that we come to you, our dear listeners, and ask for contributions and support. And in addition to feeling good about supporting the shows that you love, hopefully, like this one, you also get a selection of rad pledge gifts that my boy Will's going to tell you about. Guys, there is so many good gifts this year. So many wonderful things you get from the $5 level all the way up to the $200 level. Donate what you feel like. Go crazy. Go buck wild. There's some good Good, good gifts at the 10 20 and 35 dollar monthly levels we'll be getting into those a little bit later on in the podcast but i did want to talk about my favorite gift which is this year's story break pin the bear with me bear uh if you've That's been listening right. to this podcast you know our hilarious catchphrase if you've bear, been playing the bear with me drinking game we are sorry dead. you're dead you're gone this is the hilarious catchphrase that any one of us throws out when we're about to interrupt the to other person with a bunch of dumb bullshit so <laughs> if you are someone who likes to interrupt other people with dumb bullshit you might need yourself a bear with me pin it looks so good you can check it out over at maximumfund.org slash donate and they'll have pictures of all of the gifts that you can receive like i said we'll be talking a little bit more about those later oh and by the way uh, if they hit their goal of 25,000 new and upgrade members, we're about halfway there as of the recording uh, of this podcast. Uh, they open up all the pins for sale to members. So Pinapalooza. Pinapalooza. There's baby. some other really good pins this year, so go check them out. Maximumfund.org slash donate. Matt, what are we asking people right now to do? You know in those movies where there's the pilot and he's like tapping on the instrument and it's like, oh, the gas level, we think it's full, but it's a little, it's not quite full. That's us with fun. Once a year we check, we're like, are we really at max fun? <laughs> And no, we're not quite there yet. There's always more fun to be had. And that's why we need you, the listeners, to help support and help make this possible. No matter what you can afford, whether it's $5 a month or up to $200 a month, everything gets us to the maximum fun. Make sure that you have as great of a time as possible listening to our podcast. And for everybody who's already a member of the Maximum Fund, thank you so much. You've made this year possible. And you we guys love doing this podcast. Shit. Yes. You and dog. if you can, if, if, you know, for some reason, Lady Luck has granted you uh, extra wealth this year, if you have, you know, if you found your, your family's big very fortune of gold consider uh, consider <laughs> consider upgrading uh, uh if you can you know it's it's again hit that you're max still the, listen, you're still the shit you're, you're still the shit yeah, and yeah. if you upgrade you will be eligible for all the same thank you gifts that we're offering new members this year including the new bear with me pin including that new bear with me pin get in on those gifts guys kick up that membership another notch if you've like matt said found your family's fortune buried under uh, your backyard and, and i know right now some of you are googling how the fuck do i subscribe to maximum fun but calm down you don't need Google. You need Google to tell you how you do it. I'll go back to me if there was one Freddy, but that's fine. Go to MaximumFun.org slash donate, and you're going to select the membership level that is right for you. Uh, all we need is some basic information, your credit card, bada bing, bada boom. You punch it in. You let us know which Maximum Fun shows you listen to, like Story Break. This part's super important because your survey dictates where your money goes and which shows you support, <coughs> like Story Break. Uh, and that's all you need to do to become a member. Your membership is an ongoing monthly charge. It'll be process automatically every month, and you don't need to do anything else unless your card expires in September. That's one of the reasons, by the way, I uh, have a lot of respect and love for Maximum Fun. No joke here. Jesse put out a uh, Twitter thread that talked about exactly how they were going to get some scurvy did, and it is very show-focused. It is very direct. And without that, uh, there's a lot of shows that wouldn't exist, a lot of great uh, podcasts out there. And it very much supports our uh, week-to-week uh, for us doing this podcast. So, again, uh, our membership in the uh, uh, Maximum Fun Network has been a total blast these couple years. This is our second uh, Max Fun Drive. The group of people there are fantastic. They've been helpful uh, in innumerable ways, and they make this uh, podcast possible. But we need you to become a member right now. Here's the thing about procrastination. You can become a professional at it, and what that is is you become a professional and not doing anything. So right now, uh, I know you're thinking about it. We're talking about this into your ears. Uh, head on over to MaximumFun.org slash donate and 
contribute and become a member of the Max Fund. And uh, you know, if you have like a device, let me just help you out with that. Just turn it up real quick. Hey, Siri, remind me to go to MaximumFun.org slash donate. Listen, guys, do it now. It's so easy. A baby could do it. It's literally, you don't need to But the need, baby shouldn't But do a baby, it. do not let babies do not donate let to, babies. This, to this network. You can donate on their behalf. Yeah, don't delay. Get on over there. Hit that website and uh, join the crew of people who already know. All right, what are we doing today? Well, we looked at the history of movies and we said, AFI, what you got for us? And we looked down that list of mediocre failures and we thought you know what we can do this one one better we're gonna try and tackle the sequel to casablanca casablanca 2 which has a little bit of history well et2 went so well that we were like we should tackle another sequel that never happened so we're very excited because this is now that we're 100 episodes in it's time for new game plus of story break so we're starting over but with all of the experience points and the new skills and power-ups and gear we got from the first 100 episodes, which means we're finally ready to tackle the sequel to the greatest movie ever made, according to some people. Uh, I think it's pretty good. It's called Casablanca. What you might you have heard of it. What do you think is the greatest movie ever made? The greatest movie ever made. What do I think is yeah, the what greatest do you movie ever made? Probably Starship Troopers. Yeah, Starship Troopers. <laughs> I, hear I don't know. It's a good-ass movie. I hear that. Uh, Starship Troopers or Paddington 2. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> But Casablanca is a very, very good movie. It's up there. Yeah. It's not Paddington 2, but it's up there. No, I actually do think Paddington. I think Paddington Uno is better than Casablanca. I'll put that up. Wow. Yeah. Damn. Paddington, I think, is a perfect movie. Casablanca, like the sequence where they do the flashback, for me, where they go back to Paris is like crap, and the rest of the movie is amazing. But like they have this like long, cheesy flashback sequence that like it doesn't have any of the wit or energy of the rest of the movie. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just kind of expository. I'm like, all right, you get it. You don't think you this. Um, Damn hot takes. Hot here. take coming in hot. Um, should we describe what happens in Casablanca? What yeah, do you guys like the, remember happening in Give Casablanca? like the overall. I think the broad strokes are more or less known by most people. But so, yeah, I mean, Casablanca is Rick is your kind of cynical outsider who's in Casablanca uh, during the beginning of World War II. So he's kind of like outside the war. He kind of taking care of himself. He's running a gambling He's Den, running a uh, casino. He's, he's running a uh, it's the Rick's All American Cabaret or Cafe, cafe. Uh, American Cafe, and it's uh, he serves cheeseburgers, each- hot dogs, <laughs> he's like a really- chili dogs. It's like he's like a much milder version of, of Clark Gable in in, in uh, Gone with the Wind. Instead of like being like literally you know exploiting the war for money, he's just outside of it. He doesn't care. He's just doing his this own jaded, thing. Jaded cynical profiteer who's running a and Morocco is. I don't think it's Morocco's o- occupied by the Nazis. But right? it was kind of in the middle. Or it's of that Vichy moment. France or, yeah. or something like that. It was yeah. more or less neutral ground. But yes, the Nazis are are there as well. But as he's doing this, his lost love, um, uh, Igmar Bergman, who I forget her name in the movie. Um, oh, forgot not himself. Ingmar Bergman, Ingrid Bergman. Ingrid Bergman. In- Ingmar Bergman, Ingmar- the old Swedish man, comes and says... Ilsa. Ilsa, that's right, Ilsa. Okay, Ilsa. So anyways, his lost love, Ilsa, shows up, and he hasn't he hasn't thought about... Well, he's been thinking about her, but um, she shows up uh, with her husband, who is a famous writer who's fleeing Nazi Germany because he has... Her husband, Stephen King, famous Stephen King writer. Has dangerous <laughs> I- I- ideas about Nazis, like they're bad or something. He has dangerous ideas about entities that eat your fear by scaring you. <laughs> <laughs> and essentially the question is whether or not he's going to succumb to his selfishness and try to win Ilsa back, or is he going to do the honorable thing and help this essentially hero during World War II escape the Nazis. It's Rick has to these letters of transit, which can get two people out of Casablanca, right? Yeah. Get out so of then jail free this cards. famous war hero, you know, resistance leader, uh, Laszlo and Ilsa, Rick's ex love and Laszlo's wife, uh, are in town. And it's like the question is, is Rick going to give them these tickets to get out of Casablanca? Or is he going to be an asshole and keep it for himself? Yeah. Despite them, you know, and then at one point it seems like he and uh, Ilsa are going to run away together. But then the, uh, the classic scene at the end of the movie is on the airplane he reveals he's giving the tickets to the two of them yeah. our selfish jerk has become a noble hero but they do kind of do this thing where it's like Elsa's kind of just treated like a prop and her feelings don't matter it's like it's literally like you're part of Laszlo's work you're the thing that keeps him going yeah. is the line and it's like you're like a, you're just this guy's girlfriend yeah, you're the muse to... fuck what you want because she wants to stay with Rick yeah. and he's kind of you know what if she wanted to be more important maybe she should write a manifesto about why the Nazis were bad Will <laughs> at one point she literally tells Rick like you have to do the thinking for both of us now, yeah. which I'm always like, ooh. I, mm. um, you know, anyway. Paddington doesn't do. Paddington never 
goes around and tells him that he got to do that. Paddington the doesn't put baby in a corner. <laughs> Dude, this was made during World War II. Yes. Every yeah, once in a while, I, every once in a while, I need to, I need to like rethink when I see like a movie that's come out. It's like when, when we, people are like, oh, is it too soon for? In 1993, or like, was it too soon to do an Iraq War movie? They did like a romance movie within the first year of World War II still happening. I'll tell you one thing: the scene, to me, the best moment of the movie that always gives me chills is they're in the bar. There's yep. a bunch of rowdy asshole Nazis are in the bar singing Deutschland über Alice, yes. and then Laszlo leads the French people yep. in the bar in the Marseillaise, yes. and he gets the and then he, and the band looks to Rick, are like, are we gonna play? And Rick gives this little nod. And the band starts playing the Marseillaise, and then everyone starts crying, and I always start crying. Yeah. And like, when you think about that moment and when that movie came out at that period of time, yeah. like it's it's incredible. Anyway, so that's it's moments like that that really. Also, really quickly, isn't that the best? That's the best and national anthem, right? The Marseillaise. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's oh, a out jam. of all the national yeah. anthems. Oh, list of banger national anthems from uh, one one to five. Yeah, the Marseillaise. Honestly. The Russian national anthem is a yeah. fucking banger. I mean, you know, I can say this because I am American. Uh, our, ours kind of is not so. What? I do. The Star Spangled Banner, it works. It's, okay. it's serviceable. It's, it's serviceable. Ser I, like, for how much trash that we talk on the rest of the world for like how big ups we are, our national anthem game is pretty weak. Have you heard the Russian national anthem? No, but our it's the song of the people. It sounds like a thousand peasants rising in force. I will say this. I Ours is a dude complaining about a flag. <laughs> Whoa, what? He's not complaining about a flag. Yeah. It was still yeah, there, right. yeah. flapping in the, in the, you know, like in the middle of everything. I would say this about the national anthem. It is like an okay uh, rock song with a killer guitar solo <laughs> in the middle. Because all the... And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, is doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Yes, for yes, 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 that's true. That's much. true. That's that is true. a monster hook. You know what it's like? It's like in A Whole Lot of Love, where they have that middle noodly section that goes nowhere, but then it comes back in with the hardest Jimmy Page solo of all time. Yeah, it's kind of like Page that. Page knows. Page is sitting there, and it's like, it's sitting there and be like, man, this is getting boring. I better, whew, better tune up this guitar and make sure I'm coming in hard on this solo. He's listening to Robert Plant make sex noises, yeah. and he's like, I gotta... <laughs> All right, oh, shit. I gotta it's, make it's sure also, it's really just about a flag in a, in a harbor in Baltimore and, like, the most boring and it's useless war. It's an observational war poem. About it's the an war observational poem from the World of 1812 where he's like, so basically, woo, some the shit happened. now would be like if they found an airplane was still on a landing field during the Iraq war and you wrote a whole song about it being like, our airplane is still there in Iraq, which we started. Yeah, but I what I like about our national anthem is it comes at you sideways. It's like so many national, like what you just, the Russian national anthem, like you could put that into like, that's like something a national anthem trained AI bot would come up <laughs> with. Like our country good. This is a good country. Our lands are nice. Like the, like what I like about it, it's an it's a poem. It's poetry. Oh, yeah, you could do a dumb poem about a butterfly. Fuck you, Emily Dickinson. Like, it's like, yeah, it's this detail that's observed that he evokes a lot of meaning out of. Like, what's wrong with that? Because we're not a country that sits by and, like, goes like, ooh, hmm, poetry, let's observe the world. We exert our will okay. on others in an uncomfortable way. <laughs> saying, if we're going to do that, we might as well have a banger fucking Skrillex dubstep drop national anthem and not this, like, noodly poem about how, oh, my goodness, this piece of cloth didn't get burned up in the middle of the night during the fireworks. All right. All right. It also, gets a, little, national it, it also gets a little racist and problematic as you get into the other verses. But uh, Oh, the other verses are great. How do we get this? Is my fault for bringing up the Marseillaise. It's no, very no, no, it's the best scene. You know in the what? Movie. You know what? Right, anyway. You know what? I think people like these little digressions. It shows a little bit of the character of who we are. All right. So especially when we get meta about them. At the end. <laughs> so the reason we also brought this up is like I guess they did as you would expect with a movie that was successful. They did actually consider doing a sequel, mm -hmm. and it seems like there was at least we should bring up the what appears to be the two versions that got the closest. Okay. And we can talk about our take and what we want to do. All right. Let's hear um, it. So one was essentially uh, Brazzaville, uh, which is a city in the Congo, which was uh, essentially the capital of the free French movement, which was um, essentially the French that were still fighting during World War II, even after they were occupied by Nazis. So there's, it implies that that's where uh, Rick's going to go, because the part of Rick's backstory is that he fought for the Loyalists in the Spanish Revolution. So he used to be an ideological person who believed in fighting on the right side of war and then give it up, and now he's got it back. So like now he's going to go... So that take was essentially, is he going to go and help the French fight the Nazis? Mm -hmm. The other version they were developing was Ilsa's son, so this is many years later, is searching for his father. Spoiler alert, it's not Victor. <gasps> so, obviously, it's uh, that Rick has a son, and that it's about his son coming to find him or whatever. Um, 
So those were the two that Warner Brothers were developing. If I was like, okay, I'm going to put my sequel hat on, I'm not super interested in another movie about Rick fighting the Nazis. Mm -hmm. You like kind of got it. If I were to just judge those two takes objectively, I think that second take is more interesting. Can I say what you said, but then just emphasize a word and see if it gets you excited? Sure. But how about a movie where Rick fights the Nazis? <laughs> That's true. Like, this really fights I the Nazis. I'm trying to think about in Casablanca. Does he ever hold a Tommy gun with a cigar chomp between his teeth and unload on a room of Nazis? No, he more like... Is that in Casablanca? He more like hold tricks on, wait, wait, the Nazis. No, 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 sorry, sorry. Is that not in Casablanca? No, it's not. I'm just looking at this list of best movies of all time, and that's not in there. The only, the only fighting he does is that he gives them the wrong envelope. So there's also ways like do you make it a completely, do you tackle a different genre with it, or do you kind of go with? Uh, <laughs> all right, hold on. Let me, well, let me throw an idea at you. He's like, I think this is gonna be the beginning of a beautiful friendship, and then it fades back up. It's like between me and my two pistols, see? And it cuts to him in the back room of his club with a jackhammer, and he unloads the concrete, and underneath is a suitcase with his twin golden Tommy guns, and he's like, this time the Nazis are really gonna pay. <laughs> Who's the guy that he says that at the end? Uh, that's Claude Rains' character, uh, Louis, I believe, Louis? who is the uh, corrupt, well, I didn't get another great character in the movie, who's the corrupt uh, Vichy France, mm -hmm. he's the corrupt police officer, who then uh, is, you know, the scumbag of the whole movie and then decides to team up with him at the end, because he's he's found his patriot. Sounds like a well. fucking buddy, Nazi slaying movie is or, or, getting or, ready to go. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. This is what this movie missed. He was like, beginning with beautiful friendship. And then they predator high five, and you see Rick's bulging fucking seps and he realized he's had a tattoo the whole time that says kill all not no no no, no. Uh, louis has kill all and then, <laughs> and then rick's bicep it's nazi scum or you take a page from everybody's favorite alien alien 3 and you start the movie where where louis dies at the very beginning you start with it's gonna be beginning of a beautiful friendship but in the middle of a battlefield oh, and, and louis gets shot in the head and then rick is like this is why I'm gonna kill Nazis. This this time the Nazis have crossed the line. This time <laughs> the Nazis are personal. I feel, but here's the thing, Freddy. I feel like everyone is like, why don't they just do a movie where an angry buff man kills Nazis? But like, they try. Like, I feel like because that winds up being boring. Like, it feels like it's going to be fun for three seconds, but then, like, well, it's like Big League Chew. Do you know what I mean? It. It's like This is the second time you brought up Big League Chew <laughs> as an analogy on this but podcast. Fair, you see like Big League Chew, and you're like, oh, yeah, Big League Chew, I'm all about that. And then you eat it, and it's fun for four minutes, and then your jaw gets really tired because the gum isn't bouncy enough. But to be fair, I feel like it's one of those things that you say, like, we're going to get tired of it. It's like, oh, we're going to get so tired of big macho guys killing Nazis. I'm like, all right, you're right. We've done that so many times. Let me look up movies where big macho guys kill Nazis. Where are they? There are none. There's <laughs> some it's all sad and dying at the end. There's like serious war movies. Like where's that? Where's a movie where a man just mows down Nazis? Well, so the closest you got was in Glorious Bastards. Yes. You know, and and to be fair, right? They they build up to the end. And that well, I'm not saying that this needs to be a sustained one hour long tantric orgasm of violence. Well, that sounds good. Let's explore his little backstory. He used to fight. You know what I'm saying? He used to be the trigger man. He used to be the best sniper in the Congo. They, they called him the Widowmaker. Do you know what I mean? Because he killed so many men. And Louis was called Diva. <laughs> yeah, because he had his robotic <laughs> mech. And together, he, like... Yeah. <laughs> Can you fucking imagine if Blizzard was just like, guys, the new character is in Rick from Casablanca? Is, is Rick and Louis from Casablanca. <laughs> you control one with each joystick. Holy shit, like Virtua On style? Yeah. Like, oh my god, yeah. Okay. All right. That's the other thing. So the Casablanca took place in 1941. So it feels, I mean, World War II is going to be a part of this movie. Either it's during the movie, or if you're skipping past or, World War II, or, you really got to address what happened yeah, during or, World War II. Or it's Casablanca, colon, Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> It ain't me. It ain't me. <laughs> Rick, Rick Wait, was Wait, because so the French were involved in Vietnam, pre-Vietnam War. Rick was so disillusioned with war after World War II. He's like, this will be cool. He's like, no, it was also shitty. That He's like, no, I'm going to just get into a country where there's no chance of war happening and start Where is the new French right now? Uh, they're oh, in Vietnam. Vietnam. Oh, he's, a he's got a new cafe. Yeah. yeah. Like, he's supposed to be left alone. Yeah. Oh, you could do Vietnam, not the, let's not do the Americans. 
we can do mm. Vietnam against the French. Yeah, exactly. Because Vietnam fought the French first. Right, 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 right. And that's also, I think that makes more sense that he'd be alive. Wait, no, actually, wait, when did the Vietnamese fight the French? Would that be World War II? First Indochina War. Uh, 1941, as Ho Chi Minh uh, sought independence for Vietnam from France at the end of Japanese occupation. 46 to 54, so immediately after immediately World War II. Immediately after World War II, yeah. The yeah, first Indochina War. start fighting the French. War. How twisted do you get where you essentially recreate that famous scene you're talking about? But from the perspective of essentially the French being the Nazis. Oh, interesting. Like, to, like, a Vietnamese person in 1950 would not hear that song and be like, hell yeah, like, the glorious people who are fighting the Nazis. They'd be like, the French, again, talking about, like, no matter what, we all got blood on our hands. And Rick's got to realize that, like, yeah, like, the war is, like, again, unless you become a monster, like, like, I'm not defending the Nazis. Clearly, the French were the better people when it comes to the Nazis. But the French also did bad things. We get to this movie about, like, hey, we, like, we, we also need to address our own sins. Like, you know, colonialism. Yeah. 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 Um, again, let's say, I mean, yeah, that's our, okay. All and right. he's a white savior. <laughs> Rick comes in and he saves the Vietnamese. <laughs> what's a good, you know, you know what's not talked about? The first Indochina <laughs> War. What's the character we should really address this? What was, from, what was going now. on with this white American guy <laughs> in the French Indochina <laughs> War? That's interesting. I'll say that. It's much. definitely interesting. Yeah, it'd be a chilling sequence to see these. The yeah. recontextualization of yeah, yeah, these these again people that were essentially fighting for their freedom in the same way we fought against the British or anybody like the French were invaders to Vietnam. So. Oh man, I am. Ju- this is <laughs> this is some. This, this is like heavy. I feel like I'm running through a minefield here. <laughs> There's nothing more a apo- like you can't. Well, it's a little tougher nowadays, but there's really no minefield when it comes to I'm gonna make a character that blows Nazis' heads off. Most people are like, yeah, that's that's okay. We're okay. That's violence-wise, everything. As close as we've gotten to the perfect villain. But we're gonna do Rick from Casablanca in Vietnam when the French are still hanging on to their spoils of war after the yeah. glorious World War II. They're hanging on. So to. is that what? It is? So did they colonize Vietnam during World War II? Is that the? I don't. I'm not. I'm so. I this is the other thing. I'm just. I look. I like this idea. I'll be honest. When you pitch me that scene, and then it's the Vietnamese national anthem that they play. Yeah. That you know, in, in defiance of the Marseillese. I'm like, whoa, that's that's interesting. Like that's yeah. a thing you could do. Hi everyone, we're gonna take. A 30 second Wikipedia break. I'm gonna play a little bit of music while we all look at Wikipedia and not sound like total idiots. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Skimming, skimming, skimming. Wikipedia. Skimming, skimming, skimming. Wikipedia. Trying our best to not sound like big dumb idiots. Mm. You're okay. Can I go first? Sure. It's interesting. It feels like it would become the green book of Vietnam War movies. <laughs> because I feel like any version, of like, yes, okay, yeah, you had this first Indochina War after World War II where Vietnam fought for independence. Do you, do you want Rick fucking Humphrey Bogart to be the main character of that movie? Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, no, I think, uh, um, I think there's a lot to deal with in terms of Vietnam and the Indochina War um, and the free, and even like, yeah. Uh, um, let's maybe step away from that. So we may have bitten second. off more than we can chew. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I think maybe uh, let's 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 look for another direction. Knowledge is power, <laughs> and that's the power to look at yourself and be like, "We're a bunch of idiots." This, I mean, you could you could find a way to make it work, uh, but within the 30 minutes that you're gonna step on some. You, it would take significantly more than 30 minutes, and then even then you'd be like, "Eh, you get some think pieces." <laughs> <laughs> uh, which are good. I was also gonna say because even going into Brazzaville, it's like that's also starts getting into weird because it's like yeah, colonialist yeah yeah it's like it's not like the congo were thrilled to have the french currently in there during world war ii like yeah they were still essentially colonial occupied um so is morocco yeah that's fair yeah, but too. that movie already exists <laughs> yeah that movie already exists <laughs> we don't have to write that movie <laughs> <laughs> it's made in that's a good point and it just avoids and yeah it just doesn't deal with it and to be fair, what really do today? Was Casablanca the green book of its day? Casablanca would be the green book of today if it ended with Rick solving the problems of Morocco. <laughs> Instead, it's just like a petty white guy romance story. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I learned a lesson. I shouldn't tell this girl to stay with me no matter what. I'm, I've learned a lot. I'm going to put on my studio executive hat for a second. I'm going to be like, boys, give me the same but different. I want a movie just like Casablanca, but not just like Casablanca. 
Yes. But you know what I mean? Like if I'm like if I'm an audience member and I'm going this Casablanca two, yeah. I'm expecting a ride like Casablanca. Yeah, I mean to me that's why I would ignoring right. the the complicated same but different would be Rick with his newfound, you know, desire to help. Or at least like, you know, he's still got a chip on his shoulder, but he's gonna go back to his days. He would go to Brazzaville to help things out and he would find his he would find himself in woman form. Because you need a romance, because you need, because that's same but different, and it would be he helps like this group or or whoever is there to like you know step up and fight the the Nazis you know from the Congo yeah or whatever um, it would be the same but different it would be he I would, think you could maybe steer around the con- the Brazzaville kind of conundrum which would yeah. be a great name for a Robert Ludlum a, a, a Robert Ludlum novel if you were gonna do like they're like Rick we're sending you into the heart of France we're sending you into the beast or to Berlin right like the like is we need you to reconnoiter with a uh, a, a Berlin spy yeah. and it's a woman running a night right or something like that. And she's this jaded, like, I don't know. Again, I could see something like that. You could that. set it in France. You could make it about the French resistance. You could do, yeah, 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 you could yeah. do, yeah, it begins with him. He's done whatever they did in France of it. And they're like, yeah, we're sending you to France, yeah. like, back to Europe, finally. Um, the war is winding down. We got to make the final push. Or, or if something. you wanted it to be like gritty Rick again, he'd be like, he went to Brazzaville and he saw the horrors of French colonization. And like, you know, like he feels gritty and conflicted about his time there. Like, He's like, I went, to, I went to Brazzaville. The I, watch, I watched the Brazzaville version of Green Book. And I'm really questioning my <laughs> own racism. <laughs> everybody in Brazzaville is like, It's yeah. woke Rick comes to, <laughs> du- comes to France. To, to France. Here would be my only thing. This is another, maybe a studio note. The first movie ends with Rick not being Fun Rick anymore. Like, Fun Rick is like, fuck you, yeah. I'm a cool guy, I don't give a shit about nobody, but secretly I'm an old son. It's like kind of like Return of the Jedi Han Solo. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, they kind of really don't know what to do with, with Han Solo after Empire yeah. Strikes Back when he's at Pete Cool. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And it's like, the problem with Pete Cool is that it's like, the guy can't just be a complete aloof asshole. It's like that wounded jerk, right? Like, yeah. the, like the, like, I have this tough exterior, but it's X, Y, and Z. Like, you know, like, I got something on going on underneath. So, like, my question, like, to me, almost the bigger question than, like, what do you do with the plot? Like, what do you do with Rick that doesn't just feel like you debooted him, like, Force Awakens, yeah. where it's like, hey, I'm, I'm a smuggler again. Like, how do you make him a fun character in a new context? He's trying to assassinate that's all I got. That's the only sentence. <laughs> no, 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 he's specific. He's like, I really just want to assassinate. I'm trying to break into assassinating. What if, Rick, what if Rick kills Hitler? Rick, we need you to kill Adolf Hitler. Okay. What um, if he you... had a gun arm? You know what I'm saying? Like he loses his arm, and then it's like, Rick, we're gonna give you this Tommy gun arm, and he's like. Put her on, say. Okay, here's here's a, here's a question for you. Watch here, that. Here's movie. gonna blow your mind, my fellow woke boys. What's <laughs> please never call me that again? No, I'm begging you. Never, no, never, no, no. ever Stop. again. Um, how can we even thought about what is Ilsa's sequel? Oh. What happened on that airplane on the way back? Shame on us. Did, you are right. <laughs> did they make it? Maybe she's got something to say. Maybe oh. there's something she could be doing. Maybe her husband, who has you know this awesome book or whatever, gets shot down. And she needs to get that manuscript back to President Theodore Roosevelt. <laughs> she has to get it to the fine folks at Penguin House the Publishers. Uh, Ilsa, that's not the President of the United States of America. Oh, well, what do I know? You got to think for the both of us. All right, I like Ilsa. Let's make Ilsa, Ilsa the main character. Ilsa. All right, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we'll say we couldn't get Bogey for this one. Um, because he's dead. And it's just his story is done. He's done. He's right? done. He figured like, it out. The, you don't want to. You can't put the genie back into the bottle. That character had a perfect arc. Let's move on. Yeah, he's killing Nazis. What's, What's up with doing? Ilsa? Okay. Yeah. All yeah, right. She hears dispatches. Like there's like flashes of like, Rick is calling in from the front lines of World War Two. He's murdered fifty Nazis. And then like meanwhile, I'm in that theater being like, I don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Maybe they go to America. And then she finds her husband's an asshole. It's really just he, he didn't write this to stop Nazis, he wrote this to get a movie deal. So now she's stuck in Hollywood with this pretentious asshole trying to get a movie made. And little does he realize the Nazis are killing Arthur's in Los Angeles, getting right before to, to oh, they rise stop a Nazi plot. They rise the, the, the rise of the Nazis in, in Los Angeles. The the, the bunker which we try to deal with in our probably, movies. Probably East Coast one. Nazis. You heard the story about the Nazi spies who landed on, on the U.S. You hear about this? No. You've never heard about this? No. Oh, man. This is a cool story. Operation Pastorius, as it was called. Failed German intelligence plan for sabotage inside the United States. 
So the goal was to get people into the U.S. and sabotage places like the hydroelectric plants at Niagara Falls, uh, aluminum plants in Illinois, locks during rivers, basically attack key infrastructure. Uh, a submarine landed at New York, uh, and a bunch of guys came out. Okay, 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 okay. Here, and, here, uh, we, here we go. Here we go. It's cool, right? Here's, okay, here you go. Just let me let me try this out. Okay. You do. They'll, they make it to America, and then like they gotta you know they're trying to get involved and get the Americans into the war, and then you do their they're like someone like the OSS. Someone is like, yo guys, there is a secret Nazi cell trying to you know sabotage they want to blow up the hoover dam or whatever they're trying to sabotage the american infrastructure to so, right we need an undercover agent to go and expose them and find out who's running the ring right and we need a high profile person to infiltrate so here's what you do they're like ilson you're going to be our inside man you can infiltrate this nazi cult or whatever and then to seal the deal to freaking prove that she's got to that you know because she's like in the, she's in the front like she was like a, a a spy the whole time she's gonna have to shoot her husband to prove that she's like you know like in on it or whatever like, fake his death and then she's got to go in i don't know does that make sense a cool spy movie it's, it's like a, a spy cool movie. spy movie yeah yeah I, I i like that i like her being like a spy. i was thinking you can either as much as it is like if you want freaking fridge something like you could also just get rid of Laszlo, yeah, like have him, have him die on the way or something. And she's like, now she's embittered. Like she's done. She's the one who sacrificed all this stuff. She sacrificed Brick and her husband and all these things for this war. And she's now stuck in New York City, you know, whatever, working as a waitress or something, right? And like, you know, essentially almost like a meta commentary on like her position in this movie. And then the place that she works is a spot where the Nazis are meeting up, and she realizes it, and that's how she gets involved in the spy stuff. Okay, oh, oh, okay, here you go. So, yes, you do this. Laszlo Crooks, right? Yeah. Maybe Laszlo gets whacked by Nazis, right? Or, like, you know, like, he, yeah. they got him. The Nazis are taking everything from him. The Nazis got him, right? Yeah. And she winds up in America, and it's like, sucks to be you, lady. Like, yeah. be like, you're screwed now, right? Yeah. She gets a job at a bookstore, mm -hmm. and the bookstore is, unbeknownst to her, a place where there's this dead drop for Nazis, right? And then you do, you even made me do, there's, like, a cute kind of, like, building romance between her and like the guy who runs the bookstore and then of course the guy turns out to be yeah. you gotta smoke him at the end of the movie you gotta yeah. take him out blast him with that gas and then you do like she's trying to expose this not thing and then it's like it's almost like a rosemary's baby where like none of these fucking chauvinist assholes in the oss want to take her series right they're like like look look honey we don't need some we don't need some european uh lady coming around here telling us like we know what we're doing right yeah. and of course it's like you know the nazis have infected the oss it's like this so you do like new york or washington or wherever she is like there's this powder keg about to blow which is the nazis are planning this coup they're gonna take over the you know uh the the capital or something mm -hmm. like that she's getting deeper into the conspiracy she's trying to blow the whistle on it the character you bring back from the original is everyone's favorite character is claude Rains's character mm -hmm. louis yeah. uh louis made it to america do you know what yeah. i mean like for some reason he's and he's up to his old schemes again do you know what yeah. i mean like he was like 